An example of synchronization could be seen in a tree and its branches. No branch can bear fruit on its own unless it is synced with the main tree, with the stem and the roots because the nutrients are absorbed from the ground by the roots and then it is sent down through the stem then the branch can pick up those nutrients to be able to be nurtured to bear fruit. If we do not keep in step with God, we will not be nurtured. We won't even be able to come to this place of being matured because we need this nurture from God through his word, through his leading, so that we would align with him and see him take us to where we ought to be in life. Scriptures say, remain in me and I in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, but must remain in the vine. So neither can you unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. The one who remains in me and I in him bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. This is so important. And this is my confidence that when I keep in step with God, no heights, no achievement, no measure of success, is unattainable to me. So this came to me and I was like, Lord God, wherever you take me, may I never come to a place that I feel like I don't need you again. May I never come to a place that I feel like I do not need your guidance. I do not need your leading. I do not need you in my life, your presence and your spirit because that is the place of failure. The place of failure for a believer is not necessarily a place of doing something wrong, like what we call overt sins, but it's also in the place of losing touch with the presence of God, losing touch with your foundation, losing touch with God leading you, with the Holy Spirit directing you. Because at this point, you might develop pride and feel like I know what to do. Like when God told Saul, go and kill all the Amalekites. Saul went ahead and did as he thought was good because he had advice from the men that he worked with. Even when Samuel told Saul, wait and I will come and do the sacrifice, Saul could not have patience because he felt like, am I not also a king? Can't I just do this sacrifice? That is the place of not listening to the voice of God, thinking you know what to do. And to be founded on the sure foundation, you need to keep listening to the voice of God and be grounded in Him. It is wisdom for every child of God to be founded on the rock and not build their house on the sand, which is you cannot build your life on your philosophy or the philosophy of the world or on your intellect or on your understanding. You need to build your life on Christ, the solid rock. Scripture says when you build your house on the sand, it is foolishness. Because when the wind blows and chaos come and challenges come, that house will crash. But when you build your life on Christ, you are building your life on a solid rock. Practically, it means as God lifts me higher, I am depending on God. I'm looking up to Christ. I am putting my faith in Christ. I am not trying to think that I can do this on my own. That I should I think that I can do this alone? Finding balance as you go higher. Most of the time we find out that many people are so ambitious. Like your ambitions overcloud your need for a foundation, for a grounding. Because you want to get what you need at all costs. You don't need to live such a life as a Christian. Yeah, you need money, but you don't have to love money. You don't have to allow the love of money to consume you. Money is a resource that God wants to give you because it is necessary for life. Money is a necessity. Even scripture says that money is a defense. But by the time you allow your heart to crave it and then... That avarice grows in your heart. You will want to get rich at all costs, which means you can do anything just to get rich. And that is the place that you lose balance. You need to find a balance. Is money necessary? Yes, it is. Is gaining success necessary? Yes, it is. But it shouldn't be at the cost of or at the expense of losing what is most important to you, which is losing you to get those things because we live in a society and generation whereby a lot of people sacrifice their life just for a few years of riches and wealth and fame and that doesn't make sense at all what makes you go into this if not that the devil is deceiving you find a balance as you desire to go higher 
Why do you want to go higher? What is the purpose behind you needing money? Do you want to become richer so that you can show people that you are rich? You want to flex. If it is not attached to the purpose that God called you, then there is no balance on that. For example, someone that have a lot of money without purpose will not know what to use that money to do. So now, a lot of options is presented to them. And then they would want to try these options and... and Try to explore things because now they don't really have a purpose for the riches that is presented to them. So they just want to try different things. And at the end of the day, they might end up hurting themselves. Scripture says, but people who long to be rich fall into temptation and are trapped by many foolish and harmful desires that plunge them into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. And some people craving money have wandered from the true faith and pierced themselves with many sorrows. The way up is humility. So humble yourselves under the mighty power of God, and at the right time, He will lift you up in honor. For God to keep you grounded, it is for God to keep you humble. The scripture says that pride leads to a fall, but humility leads to honor. That is your way up. And the truth is that people think humility is humiliation. You're wrong. Humility leads to honor, but when you take on pride, that is when the humiliation comes. When you are intentionally humble and obedient to God, that is not humiliation. Humility helps you keep stability in life. It makes you stable. Humility does not mean cowardice either. Because so many people might think that is humility, which is walking in this piety and poise, religious way. Like, oh, I'm humble, I don't really respond to people, I don't really talk. No, 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 that's not humility. Humility does not have a particular dressing type, maybe a dressing code. It's not shown by the physical appearance. It is not shown by how you stick your head down to work. That is not humility. Humility is not low self-esteem. The Bible says God did not give you the spirit to fear. He did not give you the spirit of fear. He gave you the spirit of power, of love, and of a sound mind, which is you can talk about humility to be you are walking in your power, you are walking in love, and you are walking with a sound mind, and that is a stable human being. And that is who you should be as a believer, a stable person, someone who is not moved by the waves. Someone who knows who they are, you are sure of who you are. Now, when it comes to self-esteem, a lot of people struggle with their self-esteem and then they end up embracing these two weaknesses instead of embracing humility. What are these weaknesses? Some people embrace low self-esteem and then they feel like I'm just being humble. That's not humility. Like I said earlier, humility is far beyond that. So it could be seen like this swing whereby low self-esteem is this other extreme whereby if it is swinged like this, low self-esteem is down and high self-esteem is up there, right? But humility is the stable ground where you are supposed to be founded. A person with high self-esteem will feel like I am better than everybody else. Nobody can do what I do. However they say it, but it makes you feel like nobody measures up to you. You are the best of the best on whatever you want to say, but it is a weakness. That is pride. And the Bible says that is what will lead to humiliation. Because even physically speaking, by the time you meet someone that does better than you, someone that is higher than you, your pride is crushed. Your ego is crushed and you feel humiliated. Not because the person did something wrong to you, but just because they are better than you. And you were not supposed to compete with anybody. Low self-esteem on the other hand feels like I don't deserve anything good. I am just here on my own. I don't belong anywhere. God doesn't want you to be in that place. That is why the Bible says, humble yourself in the mighty hands of God. This is your way up. Humility. This is your stable ground. And when I say, God, as you lift me up, keep me grounded. The thing I'm asking God is keep me humble. Keep me humble in your hands. Keep me humble under your arms. Keep me humble under your power. Keep me obedient to you. Because in the place of humility, I accept who God has made me to be without shame. I am bold about who God has made me to be. I'm not ashamed of who God has made me to be, thinking that if I shine in who God has made me to be, that when people start saying things about me, it's going to make me feel like oh, I'm supposed to be hiding. No, neither should it feel like, oh, I'm bringing myself up. I'm not bringing myself up. I'm just being me authentically 
how God has met me. I'm walking in my gift authentically and it, it, it's not pride because I'm not shoving it up on people, but I am just walking in my lane. Humility will help you walk in your lane and embrace contentment without having to compare and compete with anybody else because you don't need to. And this is where you can adopt this prayer with me. God, as you lift me up, keep me grounded. I need a grounding God. I need to be humble. 